announcing Jane the Disco Queen. Can I be an 80s daydream? Can I dance real slow, baby? I know you wanna know. I'm just like thinking about like a uh, type of kid that um can basically enter my Big Mac side. Man, I'm talking about I need some more now than ever before. It real out here. My little chocolate fixation, babe, I miss you, man. Check me. Holding hands is a thing of the past. I love blank with this toe sucker, this slow fucking zone the sand. Getting closer with my motions in hand. Not only do my nature ride, baby, made my whole horizon expand. And I Okay, so I'm standing here about to make me a Big Mac burger, sloppy joe, whatever you want to call it. And I was stirring my veggie bush. And I'm just like thinking about like um, Glamazon Tay and her most recent vlog. And I like reflected on what I said and reflected on it out loud to myself on like how truthful those words speak to me. And for some reason, as I'm like stirring these vegetables, I think about my dad's mom, my grandma. Like she just literally, she's never pops up. She's very silent. That's so crazy because she is, that's part of who I get my silence from as well. But I'm very much like my grandpa. And I figured that out today. <laughs> and that whole conversation was so cute and so funny. And if I remember it, and then Camille, I'll put the conversation. But, um, I was just reflecting on something my dad told me that my grandma told him and it's like wow In so little words she gave him a warning and that warning was She could watch me anytime because I am the type of kid that um Can basically entertain herself like I'm good with people and I'm good without people. It doesn't matter. And it's like, wow, the fact that my dad did not even heed that warning that she should have paid attention to. And the reason why I think about that is because my stepmom was the one who like opened the portal, basically, <laughs> inner child portal, portal um, of my dad. And basically she was like, ooh, I know that's eating him up. And I was like shocked that she said that. Cause it's like, baby, you love somebody the way you love somebody. You don't treat them the way that you treat them. Especially if I'm your daughter. Like I lost like the daddy daughter love for my dad. Like when he put his hands on me, like that's all it took was that one time for me to be like, oh yeah, nah, like we not doing that. <laughs> like as a kid, I said that. And it's like, and it's probably an inner child portal awakening because um, I just wonder, like, why? Like, what did I do? What was my facial expression? Like, I know I told myself, don't cry. And I always say this out loud, I feel like. But I always say, I know I told myself, don't cry. But what about me? made him put me down as fast as he did because literally i know i said oh we're gonna look i like i was so smart as a child because i vividly know i told myself we're not gonna cry and whatever he's about to do he, i'm gonna look him in his eyes <laughs> like as a kid i'm like oh <laughs> i'm gonna make sure i watch you do this like <laughs> i really did that so like vividly i went back to that situation and so it's like I always wonder, like, what about that is what made him put me down and be like, oh, wait, yeah, let, like, go take your bath. Like, literally, he could do nothing but be like, yeah, just go take your bath and go to bed. Like, that's all he could do. And, yeah, it's like, I just wonder, no, like, what it was. Because he's never, ever, when I say never, ever, he's never put his hands on me ever again in life. And I know for a fact that that has something to do with it i do know that but i feel like the mental abuse is where he just channeled all of that pent-up aggression because he know he can't put his hands on me and he knows that because of my mother maybe maybe that's what that is maybe i just 
connected the dots because I'm very like my mother. So maybe that's what it was. How every time he was putting his hands on my mom, like my mama most definitely fought back. I know that for a fact. Like nigga, I didn't just get that from nobody. So it's like I maybe that's my answer. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. I don't need to even think about that no more. Wow, so crazy. Wow. It's so crazy. Like, literally, how the hell am I just cooking? And my grandmother that I really don't know much about, just what I know as a little girl, and I always have good memories, and pictures I've seen have always been good. But, wow. So I added my meat. <laughs> and then we're going to let this cook up, and then we're going to add our pickles. Let that cook for a little bit. And then we also gonna season this. So I'm about to season, let it cook, add pickles, let that cook a little bit, add a little bit. No, I'm not gonna add the sauce. I'm gonna add the sauce separate because I'm taking this for lunch too and I don't want the sauce on it. So yeah. Just cut up a real pickle. I like these pickles better than the jar pickles. So I just cubed up some pickle. And then we want to add. I got sauce that I made a long time ago. I made this before, so been had that in the fridge or deer. It's my Big Mac sauce. This is the bread I got. I really didn't care too much what it was. I just got whatever felt the softest and just try to be as healthy as possible. There's really nothing in this world that we really can eat that's healthy. Like I have an app where you scan the barcode if you scan the barcode everything is bad so <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is what we got <laughs> okay. this pretty much is done so we turn down the temperature and we just go get this out the middle the burdness away from as much fire or smoke whatever as possible probably cut it down some more Got some butter already, and we just gonna let that toasty roast roast up. So I just took out my eyes, about to put the glasses on, and I had another thought that I wanted to make sure that I highlight and point out, and that is another. I don't need to live with the rich type of vibe that I am. Another confirmation with my client today, and she was talking about how basically like she lives so close to the mall that although she lives in a nice house, nice area, nice neighborhood, she still has to deal with like crime like ish activity as if she lived in the hood. And it's so funny because I was like, oh, so you basically live in a bougie ghetto. <laughs> and like, she thought about it and she just couldn't help but to laugh but she's like yeah this is exactly what it is so don't be fooled by the rich or who you think is rich or who you think got money or the area that somebody live in because baby the rich ain't so good or better than the ghetto the hood the trailer park or suburbia downtown it's all bullshit. Like, literally, Houston as a whole is nothing but a bougie ghetto hood. And yeah. <laughs> I can't help myself. I saw it and I was like, oh, I gotta add a little. Let's see how this tastes. Because literally, that little bit of my right there, when I say a little goes a long way, a little goes a long way, and I can taste it. Like, it has like a good little smoky ish, like beefs and shit like baby i can't wait to barbecue and i normally say i can't wait because you're not supposed to say that but i can wait but i really can't wait to try this 
and barbecue. Oh, yes. Just did my bun, Denise. Now I just weighed down my fries. My meat is basically done. Got the fries going. Got to add seasoning to this. Oh, yeah. On camera, I can tell they cooked. Y'all. I ain't really a salt girl like that, so yeah, I'm not adding salt like make crack. Got me some cookies going. Yep. I don't want them hard. Can they move? Yeah. These are done. I want them soft. Here is my meal. She looks pretty good though. Can I say so myself? Apologies for the wait, sometimes it's hard to get the distractions up off you. For enough time to jot your thoughts, but fuck it, this morning I got to. I'm thinking about you. I heard you just had your another little baby. Congratulations, I hope you got through it with no complications. I find it amazing the way that you juggle your kids, the biz, the fame, the pictures that's hating. They sit around waiting for you to fall off like the album I'm making. But I hope that you take in a little time for yourself. Still in a moment or two to unwind between the hectic sounds of your precious baby crying. Do you hear your mind? A lot going on. I hear it in all of your songs. Niggas been doing you wrong. Barely been doing you wrong. All days you feeling like you on your own. I wrote this for you to put on. Thank you for sharing your light, your voice, and writing a beautiful poem. Session 32, bring me to tears. Be getting choked up when I hear it. Seem like I keep crying off so much since a nigga had these kids. And I don't know what it is that made me so sensitive. More than I already was. But never mind that, I'm back. I'm sending you this little audio hug. And hopes that you smile for getting the stress that piles from all the above The more that we hurt, the harder we love As soon as it's gone, we gotta re-up It's just like a drug If people knew half of the pressure, they know that it's hard to be her I'm sending you scissors and Ari, my love Y'all holding us down, y'all holding the crowns You ever need something from me, don't hesitate, please Just hit me and I'll be around, I'm gone Now he want to be outside. He was doing all this wine. He ain't been outside long at all. And he started that whining. Like, get over yourself, sir. Make up your mind. You don't always need me out there with you. If it was grass outside, you wouldn't be saying that. Let me stop. Because <laughs> if it's grass outside, he still would be lasting five minutes and then whining at the door. I'm about to dye my doggy green first, basically. Because he just has a nice little white patch. So if this is enough, I would dye it green. I already applied a little sulfur eight because this is like the best thing that works for their allergies. And if I have anything left over, I'll put the indigo blue. And yeah, so we're gonna put some by her where it's whitey white white, <coughs> and then his little patchy poo raw her, and it just stops right there, so it's not much of anything. And then I was debating if I wanted to go up here, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Getting his little beardy and then stuff. Come here. Now sit down. No, sit down. 
Uh-uh. Let's take a look. No. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Like how we be 
working You platinum like rappers on Hershey's Boy, that's what is worthless You get the message over and over like it was urgent And then act like you ain't heard it when you see me in person Mr. Snoopy has a new collar <laughs> And it's working We're able to walk I'm so excited So excited <laughs> I brought Snoopy this prong collar, and I kid you not, instant results. Like, yesterday, we did about a good three laps in the apartment. Today, we walked the bayou, and yes, game changer. Game changer. Yeah, it's that bird in the VIP line, with the V-turn and the Issa run. She's driving Nissan, and she in a Pima. 